that's right. Anyway, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky runs CyberSec People. Ricky is pretty much, if you go to a con in Australia, he'll be there. Um, really awesome dude to talk to, really helpful. And he's going to go through a CV workshop today. So I will hand over to you. Thank you. Um, so the CV workshop. Um, cool. Thank you. So let's get on with this. Uh, okay. So who am I? So thanks for the quick intro, Ian. Um, so founder of CyberSec People, cybersecurity recruitment company based out of Melbourne. And yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff uh, with, I guess, the community and yeah, try and keep busy and build relationships and just try and add some value. Um, and I just genuinely enjoy being part of it. Um, and if you're able to find me somewhere online, then CyberSec Ricky is my handle. So CV workshop, what I would like to run through um, is what does a bad CV look like? What does a good CV look like? Um, fortunately, I spoke to a lot of hiring managers about this and um, sharing, sharing some feedback in terms of how long should a CV be, which is a question I get asked a lot. Um, and also just what is the real key information we're looking for? Um, and then giving you an example of um, a a CV that I've built myself because I don't want to, I guess, share other people's CVs. Um, that I'd be, if I saw that, I'd be really happy. Um, and I guess for a bit of context, I see hundreds of CVs a week. Um, so I, yeah, it, a lot of CVs, a lot of information, um, and there's a lot of work that people can do, but it doesn't have to be too in depth. So a bad CV. Um, it's all about the information. It's the con. It's the content, um, and then how you deliver that content. So, it's not informative enough. Um, really, um, there's some terrible CVs that I see in terms of someone just literally just talks about the job title they have, but doesn't even talk about the role or what they've achieved in that position. It can be too long. Um, I once got sent someone's CV, um, and that was. Um, a 112 page white paper as a CV, um, which no one's going to read that. Um, and I do see a lot of CVs that are between sort of six to 12 pages long. Um, again, I think it's too long, um, but we'll talk about what a good length of CV is uh, further on. There's a lot of CVs that just look horrible on the eye. So just, they just look horrible um, to be honest. And I think there's a lot of tools and templates you can use to really just help yourself stand out a bit more. Um, incorrect information is a pleasant way of saying that someone lies. So there are times when people have been caught out lying on their CV or maybe over exaggerating skills or things that they have done. Please do not do that. It's a, this is an industry where you can and will get caught out. Um, you don't have to over exaggerate things. Um, long paragraphs. So really lots of big sentences um really you want to break things up into bullet points and then just general poor formatting um and spelling errors i think with with all the technology and stuff we have these days there is no excuse to have bad grammar on a cv and just boring um there are a lot of cvs that literally are, are boring um you want to basically grab someone's attention um we'll talk about that as well so thanks Google. Here's a couple of very average looking CVs that I copied and pasted. And I mean, this is not relevant for security. Um, these are fake CVs. I'm sure they are, but I do see a lot of CVs like this though, where you will see that there's not really much detail in there at all. And in the personal profile, there are certain, certain keywords and phrases that come across every, well, it's not every time, but very often in terms of I'm a hardworking person and things like this. And there's really generic terms. So something like that really doesn't help you stand out as an individual. Um, thanks, Faz. Um, and yeah, um, just you want to make it as personal as possible. Here's another example. Again, layout pretty average. Um, it's way too much personal detail in there. Um, you do not need your home address and things like that. Date of birth even. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just very average looking CVs. But again, this 
looks quite normal compared to some CVs that we see. Um, Seek have got some good information out there. Uh, so they've got a couple of slides that I've borrowed. Um, this is the example of a bad one. So very similar to those other two um, in terms of just lack of information. Um, you know, something like this just doesn't tell you about the person. My, my general advice about CVs is this is your personal marketing material. Um, this is how you're going to sell yourself, present yourself to normally people that don't know you. Um, if you're pretty fortunate where you're in the community and maybe uh, a friend's recommending you or, or friends even hiring you, then it's a different situation. But most of the time we're applying for roles where you might not know the hiring manager or it's being seen by someone else from HR or a different manager that's going to be reviewing the profile. You do need to sell yourself. So grabbing attention, it is one of the most important things. I think for me, the two key elements of a CV is how quickly you can basically introduce yourself, grab attention. And the other thing is the quality content. So um, time, this is an interesting one. Uh, I will check the questions as I go, if that's okay, or after, if that's okay. Um, in terms of questions, uh, sorry, time, um, how long do we actually have in terms of someone reviewing a CV? And it may surprise some people, might not surprise others that maybe actually do review CVs, but I can say it's not long. Um, so 60 seconds, personally, I think that'd be very generous. Could it be more or could it be less? So could it be 30 seconds? Wrong again. So again, Google, thank you. Um, telling us that between six and eight seconds, you'll see some others that say 11 seconds or whatever it is. And it might not be six seconds that you have uh, to grab someone's attention, but to be honest, you don't have a long time at all. So you wanna make as much impact as possible to grab that person's attention. That comes with that initial sort of profile, the look of a CV, the look and feel. Um, again, if it looks interesting, then someone will gravitate and spend more time on that. Um, here's an example of a CV. Interesting, the surnames um, on there is Burke. I have nothing to do with that CV. Um, this is an okay CV. I, there's definitely some improvements that can be actually made on this, but what's good is the way it talks um, sort of, first of all, in that first paragraph, uh, the personal profile, is you're selling yourself. And I think it's really important. That first key bit, you need to tell someone who you are, um, what you're doing about it, uh, or where you want to be. So depending on what level you're at in your career, if you're someone who's aspiring to get into security, it's gonna be a different type of description compared to someone who's a CISO or a threat analyst or someone in the industry already. But Effectively, you talk about yourself and, and what you do starting off with, then looking at some key skills um, and then talking about the role. And I think it's important to talk about the context of your role. You may have the job title of security consultant, which in this industry can mean so many different things from pen testing to GRC and many, many more. Um, or it could be more of a job title that other people do know. So it could be a sysadmin. But a sysadmin at one company is very different to maybe a, a different, different business or what defines your role compared to somewhere else is what you achieved in that role. So you don't have to do the copy and paste, which often it feels like someone's literally just copying and pasting their, their uh, responsibilities from a job ad and, and pasting it into their CV. Um, we know what the role generally does. If, if it's a bit unusual of a position, then maybe give a brief one or two sentence summary. But I think really focus on your achievements. What did you do in that role that other people would find interesting? And again, depending on your job itself, it can differ from you know, whether you've delivered something, whether you helped save money, but it's all about the, um, the context or the content. Uh, I'll come back to how long a CV will be very shortly. So um, in typical fashion of putting out a tweet that uh, quite a few people did see, there was a spelling error, which was fantastic. Um, but I want to get some feedback from people out there. Um, so it's one thing me having an opinion. I see lots of CVs. We help um, hire people across the country and beyond. Um, but 
again, this is my opinion. I, I like to get the feedback of other people in the industry, um, the actual hiring managers. What do they want to see from a CV in terms of how is, how is it presented, the length of it, the information? Um, and this is the feedback that others shared. Um, so you'll see some very familiar th themes here. Um, so I think some a very simple thing, aligning, um, I guess the role being advertised. Um, so you want to get the information correct. Um, I guess taking a backward step, but looking at this, um, uh, as a bigger picture, if you're, if you're maybe desperate for a role, or maybe you're looking for your first role in the industry, a lot of people will apply for as many jobs as possible. And I don't think they tailor their search or they tailor their applications on a role by role basis. Yes, it might, it will take you more time, but I think if you're selective about who you're applying to and then the information you're sharing, because they, it can differ slightly role to role, depending on the needs of them or the role and what you have to offer, um, you can have a much more successful approach that way. Um, so the key things I'm, I'm seeing across here, um, where Thomas has pointed out is basically outcomes and business, business problem. I think if we, if we remember that effectively security IT in general is there to support a business. Um, and if you can show that you are aware of that and you're helping solve problems, that is, that is massive. Um, and then effectively being aware that what you're doing is help helping produce outcomes. And this is the information you want to be highlighting on your CV. So uh, th this guy here looks quite familiar. Um, and I fully agree with him, not just because Ian's helping run the conference, um, but it's the information. So his last comment is examples, examples, examples. This is huge. Um, it's one thing saying that you've done something. It's another thing talking about the actual experience itself. So if you can then talk about that and then put it in business context, you know, what did you do? How did you help deliver something? And what did it mean to the business? Um, that shows that you've got a very, very different level of understanding um, than maybe a lot of others out there. Um, so if you can demonstrate that business impact, massive, and you do that through examples. Um, ben, great, another one, outcomes. Um, so some familiar names that people will see there. Um, I think a good example by Brendan there, Sparkle Ops, is bullet points. Um, so again, don't list your job description as bullet points, but again, what outcomes did you get? Um, what else? Um, so this is massive as well. Again, this is more around information, but okay, basically keeping it personal and, and relevant to yourself. You may be new to a, to a job. Maybe you're aspiring to your first role in security. Maybe you're aspiring to pivot from one role to another role in security, but Often it's maybe not, it's not about what you do in your job that's really relevant or it is, but the additional stuff is what you do in your spare time. So again, it could be what tools you're building, what research you're doing. It doesn't have to be technical things all the time, but it's a bit easier to highlight your Git, uh, GitHub account. It could be easier to highlight a research blog that you're sharing. This is stuff that people really, really want to see hiring managers because it, it shows another level of commitment and de determination. And if you have, two people are very similar. Um, and again, it could be whether people are experienced or not, but you've got, let's say a couple of experience, both people working at a certain type of business, certain type of role. It's how they present themselves that can help one person um, basically move on and progress quicker. And that can come through the information they're sharing on their CV. So that's the examples, that's the outcomes, and also the stuff they're doing in their spare time. Um, so not, not enough people actually put the things they do in their spare time. So whether it's conferences, involvement, going to meetups, um, again, the research blogs, the things like that, the amount of times I've told people to put their research blog and their GitHub account, um, on their CV because it's really relevant or even their LinkedIn, um, is massive. And I think you keep doing those things. People will see the value you can add in different ways. Um, so another for, um, outcomes based i'm sure it is down there somewhere um but okay problem solving so again it's thinking about problem solving and having that sort of learned mindset i think that's that's really key as well so if you're sharing again aware of whether it's business outcomes you're a problem solver you could be at a level where yes you understand this technology here but the thing is technology is moving so quickly that what you know today 
it might be relevant in a couple of years, but there'd be lots of other, other things you need to learn as well. So if you can demonstrate that you are a consistent um, learner and you actually enjoy it, and you're, you're passionate about something, um, you know, you've got much more likelihood of <clears throat> getting hired for new roles and getting opportunities for learning and development if you show that basically you are that sort of person already. Big question, how long? So how long should a CV be? Um, I've had some interesting conversations with this over the years. And if I'm completely honest, my opinion has changed and I'll tell you where that's basically gone. Um, so these are actual hiring managers um, that very kindly shared some feedback on LinkedIn. So one page, one page being customized. Um, I agree. Um, so Mark, who runs uh, security over Accenture, two pages. Um, Justin contributing there again, two pages. And I think he's spot on there. Um, it's about communication. So you don't have to list everything you do, but I think it's about how you um, share the information. I think it's really important. Um, Chris, um, another for two pages. Um, and we have others as well, who's maybe two pages or more if you're more experienced. Some people like the whole history. They like to see everything. But if I'm honest, I think the way that I speak to a lot of managers these days, the feedback is um, effectively what you're seeing here. They want to see concise information that's articulated very well. You don't have to to talk about everything, obviously list the jobs you've had, but you don't have to go into crazy depth in about each position. So be very selective. And that's where a tailored approach about your maybe roles you're looking, looking at or applying to is relevant because certain information could be relevant for this company here, or maybe different for another business over there. And this was the feedback. So the vast, vast majority was up to two pages. Um, I used to be someone who would say five, six pages. That's okay. And look, to be honest, I still send CVs of people that are still those sort of lengths, but my recommendations of these days is you want to pack compact things as much as possible. Um, I think it goes in line with demonstrating your ability to communicate. Um, I think really uh, emphasizing things and it's that impact. So does someone realistically are they going to spend the, the whole time duration reading a five six page cv um some people will but i'd say the most ma vast majority won't be uh, they'll be scanning the cv for the right sort of information to say is this person worth getting in for an interview um, and that's all you're looking to do you're looking to generate enough um i guess interest in that description or the sharing of your profile initially then to then have the proper conversation of talking about what you have to offer, understanding their requirements and sharing information. So that said, where do we start? Because to, to be honest, creating a CV is a pain in the ass. Um, I review lots of CVs. Do I like putting them together? The answer is no. And I think the vast majority of people don't. I think through our careers, we don't update our CVs too much. I think we only do it when we actually are maybe needing or looking for a new job, which unfortunately might be relevant for a few people out at the moment. Um, but I think the, the, I guess the usual thing I see is someone's got a CV that's a number of years old and all they do is every time they've got a new job, they just add, add the next one, add the next one, add the next one. And they haven't actually taken the time to actually revamp the whole thing, start from scratch, which again, it sounds really labor intensive and to be honest, it can be, but it can also be really refreshing to analyze yourself um, and actually think about what things you want to demonstrate, which, what do you want to highlight to people out there? Because again, it's your marketing material. So if you don't want to read your CV, how are other people going to feel about that? So for me, these are the key things, um, a good CV. So clear, relevant information, um, a profile summary. So who are you? Basically, what do you do or what do you want to do? And then the next thing is information. This is the content. So examples, 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 
um, outcomes, so business outcomes or problem solving, sharing information. So again, too many CVs read like someone's copy and pasted their job description from a role. Um, you know, you could be um, a pen tester and you're basically writing, you're doing web application pen tests. It doesn't mean much. Um, yes, we know what you're doing, but maybe talk about some examples. You can't share, obviously, specific things like customer names and certain things, but you can talk about some of the more interesting um, projects that you've done. So, um, you know, talking about maybe the scope of it, the the outcomes, you know, what did you do? What was your impact in that? And then you're not going to do it for every um, engagement, but it, as an example, it, or it could be, again, you're a security architect and you have some particularly tricky architecture um, because of a certain customer's infrastructure maybe there were um whatever it might be there's lots of millions of examples out there but keep it relevant for you you know what did you do not do you know we do as a collective but what did you do what was your impact um that's the key stuff people want to see um and also then it then demonstrates you have the skills um, and it's one thing talking about that you've done something um and again let's just go back to pen testing but let's go web apps um or even let's, let's keep it relevant for someone like Ian, where it's, uh, let's call it you know, more of a SOC type role, incident response. So there's a difference between someone who has done one um, investigation um, compared to someone who's done 20. So it's that sort of information as well, because you could put on your CV that you have done incident response, but it's the then the next level is the depth. How much have you done of that? And what's the real interesting stuff that people want to see? keep it short keep it concise one to two pages easy on the eye um, keeping it easy on the eye is easier said than done but there's some really helpful templates out there um, that i recommend so i will share those as well and one other thing i was talking to casey from bug crowd um, who gave me some feedback and i think it was really relevant on a cv it's easy if you have the experience if you have the work experience but what about the people out there that don't have it yet and unfortunately, there's plenty of people that are um, looking for a job in this space that haven't had that opportunity yet. Um, this is where, again, those things you do outside of your work or education, because, again, you could be someone who's a software engineer that wants to get into security. But at home, you're playing around with CTS. Maybe you're doing bug bounties. Uh, maybe you're building tools. This is the stuff that people are not putting on their CV. So. Everyone should, but even more so if you are um, trying to get into the industry or trying to transition or, again, maybe you want to go from this role to another role in security. So you want to be, be a, um, a pen tester, want to go into uh, blue teaming or vice versa. So if you can demonstrate the skills that you're learning on the side or in your spare time, this then demonstrates to people that you don't just you know fancy moving into that, but you actually are putting your time, effort and money um, to doing so as well. Um, and that's just sort of re rehashing that. And if, if anyone wants a link for this, I'm happy to share, um, happy, yeah, happy to share the details anyway, but basically it's very similar to the last thing about being clear and concise. But I think again, it's, it's the conferences, the meetups, the self-learning demonstrating that you're really passionate about this space. And there are, there are so many people out there that I see regularly at the conferences, at meetups, and they're desperate to try and get into the industry. But maybe they're not doing themselves justice by actually then putting that information out there. Um, so particularly, and this is for LinkedIn as well, I would recommend putting this stuff on your LinkedIn profile as well. You can let your LinkedIn and CV mirror each other. Um, I don't see much of a difference personally. Um, but effectively, you, you want to from a LinkedIn perspective, it helps. If you're putting lots of key information on there, that's gonna help you get found on searches as well. Um, and then if a hiring manager is looking at your profile and sees you're doing all this cool stuff, even if you don't have the experience, it then shows that you're pretty committed and you're uh, passionate about getting into this area. And also one page. I've seen people with no experience have three, four pages CVs. I'm sorry, but you don't have much to share. Um, so one page is, is enough. Unless your second page could be a list of I don't know, vulnerabilities that you found or research or something like that. But again, that could be a link for your blog. Um, but you don't need much more on the page CV if you don't have much experience. And don't share too much. This is 
I'm deadly serious about this. Um, I'll be honest, it's not so much from people in Australia. It is people from overseas because I do get um, resumes from all over the world. Um, I think the worst one I saw was someone, and this is this was a security professional, putting on um, not just their passport details, but the information for their parents and all of their details, including passport information as well, which is really scary when that person's in security. Um, so... You do not need even your full name, um, as in like your middle name, if you have one. You don't need your full address. I think suburb or city is enough. Um, people don't need to know your marital status. People don't need your passport details. Um, you don't need a, your date of birth on there. Um, and sometimes people put their reference details on there. I don't think it's it's always relevant. So you can just put a bit of you know, references available on request, but you don't need to put your referee's name, um, phone number, and things like that. And to be honest, if you do, um, you are then just generally sharing that for other people then to use. Um, and a, that's a trick that a lot of recruitment companies would, uh, to be honest, use as well. So um, do yourself a favor. And, and the, those people from the references, even though you're, they want to help you and vice versa, you don't need to share that information until you need to. Um, Here's two templates that I would use. So if I'm honest, I've I've only been on the the bottom one there. Um, I've not actually used it, but it looks really cool. Um, Canva, I to be honest, I use for a lot of stuff anyway for our business. Um, but the resume templates are really good. They've got so many, um, and they're pretty pretty easy to use. And I think this is where having it easy on the eye makes a big difference. And I, you know, if you've got two identical um, documents of information how you present it is the next thing so it's the quality information and then how you present that um, is really two big factors in having more time spent on your cv in terms of the viewer spending more time on your cv so i put this together it didn't take that long if i'm honest there's a lot of copy and paste information um, but this is what you could do. You could have a CV already existing, uh, but you can just use a template like this. And look, some people might not like it. Uh, having a photo on a CV might seem really weird. And to be honest, until I came to Australia, um, it was quite normal for me. I used to recruit a lot in Germany, where Germany um, people pay for profile headshots um, and then it goes on their CV. It's like quite an official thing. So most CVs I've come across in Germany actually had photos on it. And then coming over to Australia, uh, most people, 99% of people don't because that's quite normal. Um, thank you very much, TM. Um, yeah, so this is, um, you know, if, you, if we think about it, it might seem weird photo on a CV, but then your photo is normally on your LinkedIn profile anyway. So it's not much of a difference. Um, and personally, this is one I put together specifically for the example of someone that has no work experience. So again, I've kept the personal profile, in my opinion, personal in terms of enjoying coding since 12. If someone reads that person, if I read this, I'd be really excited because it feels like this person is going to go a long way in security because they're ticking a lot of the boxes that I would look for. They look like a curious person. They're playing around with things, um, which is what you want. You want a curious mind. Um, they've, you've, I've got the stuff there about outside of education. Um, so what am I following in terms of um, any self-study, CTFs, bug bounties, um, which conferences I've been to. Um, on the other side, we've got um, my at, uh, university security club being uh, involved in the CTFs. Um, so again, information about that just demonstrates, because again, not enough people even put about, they could be the president of their security club, but it's not even on their CV. So this information is really relevant because again, you're going above and beyond a lot of other people out there. So particularly if you are trying to get in the industry, unfortunately, there are thousands of people um, that want to get into security every single year with their um, new degrees and masters. Um, so it's a very competitive space. So you need every single possible um, competitive ad advantage you can get. So stuff like this will help you stand out over someone who doesn't have that. 
Um, and then I've put on there about a GitHub account, some tools uh, or tool that I've built um, and some basically programming skills and then sort of courses um, from university as well or even personal courses that someone could be studying. Um, like I say, I see a lot of CVs. If I saw that, um, I'd get very excited. Um, again, other people are different, but you could have that with you know, you could replace the work, um, the, the external CTF head information there. If you're already working, you could have obviously your current workplace there. And if you had one or two things like that, two or three bullet points about, again, what you've um, demonstrated and, and your outcomes, then that, that's enough, I think, to generate interest in your CV. Um, questions. So I've seen some questions popping up on Slack. If you don't mind, I'll go through those. Go for it. There's some very interesting questions. I think there's a lot of interest in some of the things you've had to say as well. Okay, so I'm not filtering these. So in case I'm getting uh, complaints, I'll take it one at a time. Um, so have I had to worry about personally identifying information? Uh, yeah, I think going back to the thing of, um, yeah, I th you only need so much information. Um, you know, keep it very simple. Um, even put your LinkedIn profile on there, then someone can find you as well. But you only need your name, I think, city or suburb. Um, you don't need much more personal information that, like that, in my opinion. Do I think one page CV is too short? No. Um, no, that's that's perfect, Endicott. Um, so, what, yeah, if you've only um yeah don't have much experience then one one page is definitely enough um so cool thanks for you and for sharing that as well uh feedback with that so what else so mark alito a lot of graduate cvs half on the first page educational qualifications I feel really awkward answering questions about education um, because look, u university degrees are, are helpful, but they're not, they're not going to land someone a job. I think it's many years since a degree actually got someone a job. I think when they're complementary with uh, basically what someone's doing in terms of, um, and I think whether you're working or whether you're in education, I think the important thing is what you're doing outside of work. That's the, like, your education, your degree, or whether you're working in a job, you don't get determined uh, or you don't determine the work or the coursework that you're doing at the time. What you do outside of your work, that's the stuff that you are interested in. That's where you're spending your time or money. So always, always, always um, have that in tandem with um, you know, an education degree or whatever, or master's or your existing work as well. Um, so would you recommend having degrees on, yeah, definitely still have a degree on the CV. I have it on the first page just depends on, on a layout of a page, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't worry about having the education at, at the very top. Uh, again, this is just my opinion. There's other hiring managers or hiring managers out there that might, that might differ on opinion, but I couldn't care less when I'm not looking at someone's education. Um, I'm rarely looking at someone's education, to be honest. Um, it's more about the, the other stuff on the CV. So it, the, the, the degree is helpful. It does show different things in terms of commitment and other things like that. Um, and sometimes for certain roles, it's very helpful. You know, if it's, if I'm looking for uh, like an AppSec person or security engineer, that's going to be doing um, you know, cloud and infrastructure type work, then maybe their degree can be helpful um have things like that were a system engineering or whatever um or if someone wants to get into pen testing and they've done some awesome uh, or they've been fortunate enough to to have you know someone like silvio um you know sharing information which some of those guys and girls don't even know how lucky they are um you know depends like that sort of stuff i would massively um put that on there and and as long as it's highlighted somewhere it's okay uh, so Shannon, as a hirer, how do I prevent people applying for vacant roles that have zero? You can't. <laughs> um, so Shannon, can you see my Slack channel? Can anyone hear me? 
can hear you. Uh, we can't see the Slack channel. We're still seeing the slides right now. Okay, cool. All right. So Shannon's question is, sorry, I wasn't aware you couldn't see. My apologies. Um, so Shannon's got a good question. Um, as a hirer, how do I prevent slash discourage people from applying for vacant roles uh, that have zero relevant experience or skills? The vast majority of CVs I receive are completely unsuitable and it's evident that they are they have not read the, the PD. Um, you can't, I'm afraid, Sh Shannon. Um, there's a reason why, to be honest, as a business, we don't bother advertising jobs. Um, for me, they don't work. Yes, we might get the odd person um, that's applying for a role, but a lot, obviously right now is a really weird time and good people for no fault of their own are, sort of, you know, are losing some jobs out there. But on a normal basis, good people are in jobs and you know, they, they might be open to leaving, but they might not be actively applying for jobs. Um, so unfortunately, um, I don't know how to discourage that. Um, yeah, okay, thanks, Shannon. Um, share, yes, <laughs> similar experiences there with people overseas. Unfortunately, people share too much information. Um, right, so any tips on tailoring your CV uh, to play nicely with those awful HR systems? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm honest. Um, I think the key thing is, is just making sure um, the, the information is relevant for the job, the, the job application. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not a fan of those HR systems either, to be honest. And a lot of them, or different businesses use different ones, so I couldn't tell you a key thing um, to get around what, what they're looking for. Um, some companies ask in Philippines for marital status and photo. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Gal. I wasn't aware of that. Um, yeah. Obviously, over here, that's that's not standard. Um, so I think Gal just kind of commenting that, yeah, overseas, people do actually ask for those information. Um, Brett, in terms of work history, how many previous roles or years do you go back, current and previous? That's an interesting one, um, especially obviously as the more experienced you are, the, the more positions you have and things like that. I have some people say um, 10 years uh, is the cutoff point, and I've seen that. To be honest, I, I think a lot of people are still happy to see sort of your pathway, your history. So just to understand where you're coming from and where you've got to. So it doesn't have to be uh, much of a description even, but it could, that could be literally a very small, the role, the year, the job title, company, um, and just even a one liner about the role. Um, but it doesn't have to be in depth at all. Um, I think what's important is some of these roles that we've had in the past, they can be stepping stones to where we are now, but maybe the, maybe the work itself isn't so relevant um, now as it would have been years ago. So you don't have to go into depth. I think think about the future as opposed to the past. Um, if there's certain roles, again, this where it's a tailored approach helps. If there's a role where it can actually utilize some experience you had from a job or two jobs ago, then you put it on there. Um, but you don't have to tell them about everything you've done in previous roles. So just one last one, Ricky, um, yeah. because I noticed it was posted earlier on today, actually before we even started streaming today by Liz. Um, for a long time now, I've been wondering whether there should be a difference between the content of one's LinkedIn profile versus CV. Is the CV a bit redundant these days or should it be a more detailed version of what's on LinkedIn? Um, depends what you go for. Like, I, Again, for me, I, I quite like the short two-page CV that it seems like a lot of managers are asking for these days. Um, so I think you can just mirror the, the information. Um, so personally, I, I just copy and paste the whole thing, if I'm honest. Yep. No, that's great. Look, I think from everyone, thank you very much, Ricky. And thank you very much for us answering some questions You're as welcome. well. There's loads more questions if you've got some time to answer those in the chat as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. I know, um, there's a lot of people who are very interested and there's also some conversation, you know, discussions. So things about, um, you know, government, for example, still has a requirement on bachelor's degrees for certain positions, APS particularly, um, yeah. and how that doesn't necessarily fit into the cybersecurity mindset, the way that we, um, sort of favor 
qualifications rather than you know your CISPs, your your SANS courses, all those kind of things, rather than a, a four year degree necessarily. So there's definitely lots of conversation about yeah, that. And- just on that on that note, I'm not an ex- and I'm happy to say I'm not an expert when it comes to hiring in Canberra. Um, I mean, certain types of companies I am, but in terms of actual government and their needs, I don't really have too much exposure. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, like I guess a lot of what I say maybe is catered or directed more towards industry because mm. um, that's what my experience is. Yeah. So um, for everyone, anyone who does have questions, we have started a ComfyCon AU dash jobs channel. Um, feel free to go in there if you want to talk to people. Um, I know there's a few APS experienced people around. If they are happy to provide some advice or some assistance on that, awesome. um, that would be awesome for them to jump in there as well to talk more specifically about those things. But thank cool. you again, Ricky. Thanks for having me. I, um, I hope it helps. And yeah, I'll, I'll be around for a while. So yeah. Um... But again, if anyone wants to find me, um, not in person, be a while for that, but um, <laughs> connect on LinkedIn or, or whatever, then please reach out. So I'll, I'll try and honestly, we'll try and help in, in any way I can. No worries. Thank you very much, mate. All right. Thank you.